Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today we're gonna be talking about ownership. Um, I know a lot of you guys are maybe new to the brokerage or uh, the main reason I'm starting to do more videos on this channel that I wanted to is because I actually have a lot of people messaging me like on Facebook and TikTok asking like, should I become a realtor? What is, you know, how does being a realtor, you know, work? Like, cause they're kind of scared again, a lot of us as realtors know you don't get paid unless you sell a house or help somebody with the lease or whatever it's commission based it's not an hourly job and so i would like to start making videos to to help um at the same time too we get a lot of new when we don't get a lot but we're, we're wanting to get a lot more agents and i think these videos will help in the long term because it's just something that they can refer back to and um watch the videos on their spare time uh, because there's just a lot a lot to learn when it comes to getting into real estate um, and this can work for any job really, especially that like can sales, <clears throat> but it's a lot easier and helpful. I think having videos like a library of things to go back to. And so today we're going to talk about taking ownership as people know, um, in real estate, if you don't know that you're going to know now, you do not get paid hourly. You do not get paid a salary. You are what's called a 1099, uh, you're self-employed, um, you will take your test and everything and you become a, a real estate agent and then if you're part of what's called the board you can pay your pay a fee and then you're called a realtor you get your mls things like that we'll we'll, we'll jump into those little things too those little other aspects but i think this will be the first place we start is taking ownership <clears throat> so um so today i want to start off with this it's in colossians 3 23 it says whatever you do work at work at it with all your heart as working on to the Lord, not as a human master, um, as a realtor, meaning we are called for with the purpose of integrity as we serve God. Um, the reason I wanted to put this here is because I think, and like I said, you can use this in any job really, but I, I get a lot of times, um, my biggest struggle at the very beginning was freedom. I came from a 1099 job, I mean, sorry, a, 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 a nine to five job. You clock in, you clock out, you do the bare minimum that's required of you during the day. And as long as you were there for those certain hours and you do a certain level of service, you're gonna get paid. When it comes to being a realtor, there's an aspect of freedom that you're given. You don't have to clock in, you don't have to clock out, you don't have to post on social media, you don't have to host open houses. There's a lot of things you don't have to do. Um, but if you would like to see results in your business, there's a lot of things you need to do. And I think a lot of times we take for granted the opportunities we have in this country to be able to even say we own a business, um, especially as a realtor, like again, we own a business. We, we have a, a brokerage that are overseeing us because they their whole purpose is to make sure we're following the laws of what it means to be a realtor. That's their job. We get in trouble, they get in trouble. So they make sure to train us and do the things that we're supposed to do so we know and we can't be ignorant to like, oh, I didn't know these things. But even at the same time too, you should know these things but to, because you're supposed to be always learning on your spare time and, and, and reviewing things. <clears throat> so it says, whatever you do, work work at it with all your heart as if you're working for the Lord, not uh, for your human masters. So what I mean by that is like, <clears throat> as we have like clients and as we have uh, their agents and things like that, and we're working, don't think of it as like, man, and, and this is gonna be regular jobs too. Like we don't, we, we shouldn't take for granted that we even have a job or a career or um, a place to go to, to financially be compensated for because there's a lot of places in this world that people are forced to do things that they do not want to do. There's people that don't receive equal uh, compensation for the work they're, they're given. And so I think it's very easy for us to get caught into our own world and be like, man, woe is me, man, my life sucks. Ugh, I gotta get up to go to work today. I gotta go to an inspection. Oh, I gotta go meet this client. Oh, I gotta do CMA, CMA suck. I hate MLS, I hate the new MLS. Like there's, there's so many things that we could complain about. And so I would like for you to take a moment and take a pause and, and think about your business right now. And this is me too, because I, I, I get like this too. Think about your business right now and, and ask yourself 100%, are you or have you been grateful? 
are you grateful for what you've been given and the opportunity you have been given um, to help people with the biggest financial um, expense they're ever gonna, probably gonna have to make. People don't have you know, $200,000 in their pockets to, to purchase a home. So they need help navigating how to get financing through a lender to find an LO. They also don't have experience. A lot of, a lot of people don't have experience on, on, hey, was this house built right? Do they need help finding the inspectors, uh, reputable inspectors to help do the inspections? They don't know how the financing works again with the LO and everything, but they don't know like, hey, how do the taxes work? Um, how do HOAs work? How does warranties work? Like these are things that we need to know. And, and I think especially like in this day and age where a lot of new construction builders are coming up, um, a lot of realtors think, well, if I just give them to my sales rep, they'll take care of everything. I was just hired to find them a builder. That's not, that's not what you're hired to do. And if that's what you're doing, shame. And I will say that because you are not understanding the magnitude of the responsibility and the position you have been given. There's a lot of times I, I, I've gone to builders and they're like, man, and I, I don't say this to boast, I'm saying this as for an example, um, they're, they're excited when we show up for inspections. They're excited when we show up for signing days. They're excited for we do the walkthroughs and things like that. Um, they're excited when we go with them with the home, um, like uh, the home rep, the home sales reps to look at houses. And then um, a lot of the sales reps or even the supervisors or, or builder supervisors are like, man, I've never seen an agent like you. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, we don't get agents coming out for inspections. It's usually just the buyer. Or they'll say, we don't get uh, agents coming out for the walkthroughs. It's usually just the buyer. Or home reps, or we don't usually get the agents. They usually just call or they'll just drop them off. And then usually we'll take them to a look at places. And it's usually just the buyer. Um, and I, that's sad. That's sad because you're supposed to be that mediator in between to make sure that they're getting a good deal, that they are knowing their options, and that's your job. And if that's too much for you, you shouldn't be in this industry. And so I hope and I pray that you have a mind, uh, a set shift. Um, because let me read this to you. Although we are under a brokerage, each and each and every one of us are responsible for our success, and we need to take ownership. Just as in, um, I don't know if you guys, I, Nadine talked about this. This is my broker. If you weren't, if you're not one of our agents, you probably don't know. Or if you weren't here, she talked about uh, the parable of talents in Matthew 25, 14 through 30. It says God has entrusted us with opportunities, and pretty much just kind of shortened it up. There was a master, and he had he had talents. Let's just say gold. Um, and he had three servants. He gave one servant a certain amount, he gave another servant another amount, and another servant another amount. And then he left. And then the first servant was like, well, I'm going to go invest this. And he doubled his money. The next servant did the same. He's like, I'm, I, I don't have as much as him, but I'm also going to go and double his money. The last servant who didn't, who had the least, he only, let's just say one piece of gold, one piece of talent, was like, I don't want to lose this. I wanted, he went and buried it. And when the master came back, he unburied it and held it. And the master went to the first two guys were just very pleased. Thank you so much for 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 being uh, uh, good stewards of what I gave you. You did not just hide it. You didn't waste it. Um, you 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 did something more with it. And you 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 actually blessed me because you gave me back even more. But the last one, he was very upset because that person didn't do anything with it. He's like, you didn't even put it in the bank where I can even get interest with it. And he was very upset because it just shows the level of Oh, and this parable just has a lot of viewpoints on how you can really break this down. There's a lot of teaching in there, but the one thing I want to do is like for, and this is for our brokerage because we're a faith-based -faith brokerage. That man, the last one, didn't trust God, didn't trust God enough to think that God would bless him. He was operating in a, in a, in a sense of fear and was like, I am so afraid that if I lose this, my master is going to be upset with me. And guess what? The master was still upset with him because he didn't do what he was supposed to do. God is gonna give you clients, and if you do not bless them and do everything you can to bless them, God is gonna be upset with you because he, he entrusted them to you. And we cannot take that lightly. We cannot operate in a, in a spirit of fear, in a spirit of scarcity, in a spirit of like, I, I, can't, do, I can't do this, I, I, we, you just can't. 
So I pray that if you are operating that way, that you sit down with God and you pray and ask him to give you a spirit of power and love and understanding and wisdom because you are being entrusted, again, with the biggest financial item they will probably ever purchase. And it's probably not just them. It's their families, their daughters, their sons, their dog, their cats. And so we need to understand that we are being given ownership over our business and responsibilities for the things we're doing. We need to be held accountable as well. Um, freedom and responsibility, with, freedom comes with the responsibility of managing our time wisely. Pro, uh, Proverbs 14, 23 reminds us that all work must be, uh, sorry, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talking leads to poverty. We need to be active daily, knowing our um, efforts, reflecting our commitments. This is so good. I think a lot of what we used to say back in the day, like, oh, you're just talk. You're just talk. Like, you, you have that guy that walks up, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and man, I'm having this going on, and I'm gonna, this is going to be flowing over here, and I'm going to be going and taking this. And then you, they're not doing anything. I, I think that the biggest the people that talk the most often don't do the most. Um, and you could talk about dreams and aspirations and everything that's going to happen that you, you see happening. And a lot of times it's funny because you can see. Sorry, I didn't have my mic in and somebody was calling me, but you can see what God has for you, like the dream and everything, but you don't want to put the work into getting there, which is, it's, it's a, it's a thing that's just, it's, it's weird. Like God is telling you, like, I have this for you and you just got to do these things, but we don't want to put the work in. I really want you to think about if you're already in real estate, thinking about your business, thinking, even if you're not in real estate, think about what you do now. Are you just talk? Do you just talk a big game and you sound really good? A lot of salesmen are really good at talking, but a lot of them are, are not really good at the follow through. And so I would like you to understand that, again, it tells you right here, hard work will will bring profits if you put the hard work in. And that, and I think I think that's one of the biggest things of like we find we try to find shortcuts. We really try to find shortcuts into like whether that thing is like, OK, I see myself being a millionaire. OK, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this instead of doing this. Um, where God's like, hey, my way may be longer, but it's gonna get you there. We're like, no, we want to go. We want to go straight, and it, it's 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 and it's the same thing. Like the devil does the same thing too. Like he'll, I I, we, we, I did on my other channel. I did a, 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 a Matthew four where where G, the devil is tempting Jesus, and he's telling him like, hey, I can give you all of the kingdoms if you just bow to me. And the devil will do that. He's like, I will give you everything. He, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. But you have to do something for me on top of that. So he requires you to do something for him. And then on top of that, it's usually a shortcut. So he'll say, like he was telling Jesus, I'll give you all the kingdoms if you just bow to me. And so he pretty much was saying, I'll give you all the kingdoms. You don't have to go to the cross. You just have to come to me. He was trying to give him a shortcut out of having to go to the cross. And Jesus was like, no, I'm going to go to the cross. And it's long and hard and it's difficult. And it's something that is it's very challenging and it's, <laughs> it's horrible. But that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Again, taking accountability, taking ownership. It says here in Romans uh, 14, 12, it says, so then each of us will give an account onto ourselves to God. At the end of the day, the things you do, God sees. And as uh, realtors, there's many times that the devil will offer up. He will offer up temptations in this industry and you will be tempted to do certain shortcuts. I'm going to tell you not to. I'm going to tell you not to. Because again, shortcuts are, are just another way to fail. They are not eternal. In other words, I, I, like I said, I did a, a, a Bible study on this. Anything that the devil offers you is temporary. It's going to be temporary. Anything that the Lord offers you is going to be eternal. And so if you keep trying to take shortcuts and not do the work, it's never going to last ever, never going to last. You have to do the work. And so I encourage you to take accountability for the choices you make and make sure they're eternal and not temporary. Um, I would like for you to, to take these um, these verses that I have uh, given you guys today, meditate on them this week. Understand that, you know, each and every one of you guys are liable for the decisions you make, not just to the brokerage, not just to your clients, but onto God. And that's how we conduct business is we do everything we do onto the Lord. Don't be doing things that you know you're not supposed to be doing just for an extra couple bucks. It's not worth it. It makes it temporary. It doesn't make it eternal.
Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, let me know. We're going to be, uh, I'm going to be pumping out these videos again. I would like a library for new agents. I would like a library for agents, um, that are, or people that just thinking about becoming agents. Cause I think a lot of times we see the TikToks, we see the Instagrams, the Facebooks of all the success and the enjoyment that we have of becoming realtors, but they don't see all the hard work in the background of what it takes to be a realtor. And, um, especially with people that have been in this industry for a very long time, there's, there's a lot of party like 20 2020 2017 2008 and previous like there's there's going to be hard times in this industry and if you don't have the right mindset the right understanding the right spirit you will not last and a lot of times those are going to be the, the focal points of whether that the focal points of where you're going to be tested of like doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing and um yeah so i i pray that that you guys um take what i say with with uh knowing my heart and understanding that I want you to be successful. But again, uh, if you're here at this brokerage, I'm talking now I'm talking to my, our agents, Nadine, myself, um, the other leaders cannot force you to do things you don't want to do. You have to take accountability. And if you're operating from a, a spirit of fear and, and, and scarcity of like not doing certain things, then again, you're going to get, that's the result you're going to get. You're going to get a fierce and scarcity results. But if you're operating in the, in the wisdom of God, and um, doing all your works towards him, of course, he's going to bless that. Um, I'm not saying you're going to become a multimillionaire <laughs> unless that's what God wants for you. But I'm saying that just as in Matthew, he said, um, I can't remember the verse, but it says, um, how much more does God care about me? And pretty much he was talking about the birds. Like the birds are always fed. I don't have to worry about being clothed. I don't have to worry about being fed. I God got me. And so if we operate in a sense of God's in control, then all I got to do is what he calls me to do because he's controlling everything around me. And even if you don't do what you're supposed to do, the things he needs to get done will get done. But wouldn't you rather be blessed and be used by God than be on the sidelines? OK, so that being said, I hope you guys have a blessed day. We'll be coming out some more videos. Talk to you guys later. Bye.